thought that the colors that you see like um, red blue green etc can be different from the way someone else sees those colors as confusing isn't it so well hang on here and let me explain what i mean the range of wavelengths under the electromagnetic spectrum that can be detected by the human eye is called the visible spectrum the visible spectrum comprises of light waves of wavelengths about 400 to 700 nanometers to see any object we need the presence of light so let's consider a source of light that emits all the wavelengths in the visible spectrum which basically gives us white light the light that is emitted by this source strikes the object and when light strikes a surface three phenomena are observed namely absorption that causes the surface to heat up transmission that enables the light to pass through the surface and reflection that causes the light to bounce off the surface however when light strikes any material in real life all three phenomena do take place but just to varying extents so when light from our light source strikes this object it depends on the material that lies on the surface of, of the object like paint in case if this is painted that some wavelengths get absorbed by the material on the object and some are transmitted through the material and the rest are reflected. So say the object absorbs this part of the spectrum, transmits this part and reflects the rest. The light that is reflected off that surface will contain only these wavelengths and only those wavelengths of light reaches our eyes. Now all of these were just processes and phenomena of light occurring outside the human body. So regardless of which person sees what particular object, all of these processes will take place. But the confusion, um, color confusion occurs when the light reaches the human eye. So here is where the confusion takes place. So as we know, only a certain set of wavelengths finally reach our eyes after getting reflected from an object. Now our eyes have what are called rods located at the retina and cones located in the fovea where rods sense the intensity of light and cones sense the colors of light that enter our eye. Well, there are three types of cones, each maximally sensitive to long, medium and short wavelength of light. Well, color-wise, that's red, green and blue respectively. Every single color that can be sensed is a result of the different types of cones of our eyes being activated to different extents. So, any color is like a combination of different intensities of red, green, blue. The light of each wavelength ideally creates a unique sensation in the cones of our eyes, which then send an appropriate signal through the optical nerves, which is then processed by our brain that tells us that we see this particular color. So color isn't something that is a property of an object or something that exists in the world, but rather it is just the way our brain processes what the eye sees and how it puts that image in our head that helps us differentiate between objects with ease through vision. So it actually exists only in our head. And for this object, we must all see this part of the spectrum. So we'll be sensing light of these colors. But backtrack for a second to when we first learned colors. How did we learn them? As kids, we had someone to point to one particular color and gave it a name for us to register in our heads. Simple as that. But the thing is, our brain processes every single wavelength uniquely. So the impact that one particular wavelength made on our eyes years and years ago when we were first learning colors is the same impact that it makes right now. So one thing that hasn't changed in all these years is that that sensation that one particular wavelength of light makes in our eyes, that still remains the same. Which is why when we first learn colors, say I look at this and I say that's blue, and even today I look at that and I say it's blue. But what's interesting here is that there is no way to prove that the impact or the sensation that occurred in the cones of our eyes when we saw a color, which sent an appropriate impulse to our brain and our brain processed it, is the same for every person. Since we all looked at the same wavelength of light for which someone gave a name for, we all call that particular wavelength of light as some color. But how that color looks in our head can actually differ. So say the two of us are asked to name the color of this leaf and this banana. Well, both of us would agree that this leaf is green and this banana is yellow. But the way our brain processes it and puts it in our head to sense 
can actually be different. So take this picture for example. This is how you perceive it. But in real, colors are something that only exist in our head that we associate a name with. So we call these colors like this. But if some other person A sees this image, this same image can be processed by A's brain and give A this image in A's head. Meaning this could be how A sees it in A's head but some person B could be seeing the same thing completely different from how A sees it. Maybe like this. But there is no way to prove that both A and B are sensing the image the exact same way or not. Because both A, B or whoever is alive and not colorblind would call each particular combination of wavelengths by the same name that was taught to that person in the first place, but could be sensing it in different ways which is unique to that person alone, or could be the same as some other person in the world. Hey there, thanks for watching the video and uh, if you like the video, well, give it a thumbs up, uh, share it with the people you know, and um, in case you're not familiar with what the electromagnetic spectrum is, well, you could have a look at this video where I've covered that in more detail and also well subscribe to my channel and uh, stay tuned for more videos and I will see you in the next video.